Okay, Viola rules here, and welcome back to Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. So, we're about to go do the uh, trial for Sayaka. It's really not worth talking to anybody because they're either be like, Oh, well, you know, I'm gonna look, I'm looking forward to voting for you. They don't exactly say it like that, but that's basically the gist of it. So, let's just go ahead and get on the elevator and go. I guess I have no choice but to get on this elevator. Well, then. Let us begin. Yes, indeed. Good idea. Hey. Are you scared? No, scared isn't quite right. Makoto. I said it before, but it's up to you to uncover the mystery surrounding this case yourself. If you don't, you'll never come to grips with the truth. I need to unco uncover the truth of Sayaka's death. I didn't need someone else to tell me to do that. And Sayaka's on it. I swear I'll find out who the real killer is. So I raised my voice to try and give myself courage. I turned, trembling with anticipation, towards the elevator. With each step forward, I could feel my heart starting to race faster and faster. It makes sense we're nervous. We're, we're the prime suspect in all this. At least this time it makes sense, unlike six days of sacrifice, I think it was. Everyone else was already on when I finally sucked on. No, seven days of skeptic. That's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, not six days of sacrifice. That's the wrong game. Steel box descended with heavy clunking sounds towards the school's basement. So the car runs in the basement. I wonder if this is how a death row inmate feels when his time finally comes. Oh. Rather than that, is it not more like a defendant waiting to receive his judgment? Oblivious to our shared anxiety, the elevator lowered us further and further into the bowels of the school. Ooh. <laughs> you finally arrived! What do you think? Doesn't it feel just like a real courtroom? It's like a ho a Hollywood movie set, right? Duh, shit. Not even close. <laughs> well now. Okay, okay. Everyone find your assigned seats and sit down. Hurry up! Now hurry up! We did what he said and found our seats. Though no one's sitting. As far as I can tell, there are no chairs, but whatever. The seats were arranged in a giant circle, set up so that everyone could see everyone else. Which also mean it'd be easy for anyone to transfer their attention and unease onto anyone else. The air seemed to grow heavy as we sat there. And so, the curtain on our first case opened. A deadly judgment. A deadly deception. A deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle. A deadly defense. A deadly faith. Yes, we get it, Makoto. A deadly class trial. By the way, the deadly thing where they just, like, name stuff over and over again. That I think that happens for, like, the first couple of trials. And I know it's setting it up to be, uh tents and everything. Do you want to save the data? Yes, I do. And eh, we have enough slots, so I'll save it a new one. So basically what this screen is, this is the pre-trial prep. You can open the e-handbook, you can look at the, uh, what is it, the evidence that we've got. Set skills. I actually do want to see something. We have one skill, uh, Melodious Voice, and I want to see what it is. Um, increases damage to the opponent when a statement is destroyed. Effective during the bullet, bullet time battle costs 3 SP. That's the only one. Okay, so this is what the, uh, these spell points were that I got extra of. I got two of them twice, I think. So, we originally had 9, now we're up to 11. I'm gonna go ahead and equip, um, Melodious Voice. Because, why not? Um, extra damage is always good. And, um... I don't really need to go over the evidence and everything I remember from the last time. So let's go ahead and let's go. Class trial number one. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So your votes will determine the results. Right. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the Blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Right. And the killer really is one of us, right? Yes. Stop. Can we stop asking this of question? Of course! Okay, then. Everyone, close your eyes. 
<laughs> and whoever did it, raise your hand! Really, Taka? Also, by the way, all the class trials, they do the voice acting themselves, so I don't have to do don't it. Don't be a goddamn idiot. Why the hell would they raise their hand? Exactly, Taka. Before we move on and start the trial, can I ask a question real quick? Oh. What's Hello. going on with those pictures? I'd feel awful if they got left out just because they died. Friendship penetrates even death's barrier. Uh, trying to unsettle us even more by reminding us of who's dead at the time. Penetrates? Fumi, shut up. Okay, but what about that other empty seat? Hmm? Oh. There were only 15 of us to begin with, so why are there 16 seats? Hmm, oh, no question. reason. It's just that our little courtroom here can technically fit up to 16 people. Okay. Okay. That about does it for the preamble. Get ready to get started. By the way, during the trial. First trials, up is the case summary. Yeah, we really now, need to pay attention to everything. Let the class trial begin. Because this doesn't work exactly like Phoenix Wright did. I'll, the game will, will explain. It will explain it better than I can. It's about to begin. The debate is about to the debate decide who we think the killer is. Anything I found, anything I noticed, I have to be ready to speak up about everything because this isn't just about me. Everyone's lives are on the line. Your first non-stop debate is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? Yes. As things progress during each class trial, you will engage in a number of non-stop debates. During th these discussions, characters will speak one after another without pause. Yes, that's the thing to note, that's why it's in yellow, without pause, so like, if you're really slow to think, like, yeah, you might miss your chance. It's up to you to unearth any lies or contradictions buried in their statements. What this means is that you'll have to use your truth bullets to refute what they say, that's the evidence that we picked up. Any relevant truth bullets you found during your investigation will be loaded into the truth cylinder. Use the mouse to aim, and then fire with the left mouse button. By the way, I don't think I mentioned it, but you can play this game with a gamepad if you have the capability of doing that. If you would rather play with the controller rather than with the mouse and keyboard like I'm doing. Pay close attention to each character's statements and use your truth bullets to blast the right ones. Note that if you run out of time, you will automatically fail, so please be careful. If you press the escape key during these arguments, you can review the controls. Well then, good luck and have fun. Okay, so here we go. Make your argument. Evidence of a struggle. Okay, so that's the only truth bullet we have right now. I assert that the one who was murdered was Miss Sayaka Maizono! Yeah, we know that part already. Yeah. And the murder took place in Makoto's room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we also have a time wrap here, by the way. So it seems most likely that... The killer must have taken her by surprise while she was in the bathroom. She didn't even have a chance to resist. I missed. Ah. Oh. That last one, since it, anything that you can shoot will appear in yellow, and I somehow missed. For the first bait, we'd like to take we'd like to take a quick sidebar. If you're unable to stop and refute the lie someone contradicts, the argument will repeat. The Nicarpa statement, some words appear in a different color. Did you happen to notice? Yes, I just mentioned that. Yes, I know. Please. Only effective against these weak spots. When you see one, take aim or fire, but only if you're sure it's actually wrong. You can also fast forward by holding down the control key. Okay, thanks. I assert that the one who was murdered. Yeah, we know. And the murder took place. Okay, so this doesn't actually affect the uh, time. So it seems most likely the killer must have taken her by surprise while she was in the bathroom. She didn't even have a chance to resist. There we go. Jeez, the no, reticle is so no. twitchy. You can actually um, lessen the sensitivity Just of a second, that. Chihiro. Try to remember how my room looked. Did Chihiro even go in our room? As far as I know, only Kyoko, Mundo, and Sakura did. I think we can definitely assume there was a struggle. A struggle? Between who and who? Between Sayaka and the killer, of course. So you're saying Sayaka wasn't caught by surprise in the bathroom? Yeah. She must have been attacked in the main room first. Then, she ran to the bathroom to try and hide. Right. The killer followed her in, and that's where they finished the job. Mm -hmm. That much should have been obvious after taking Thank one you, look Bayakia. at the scene. It shouldn't even need explaining. 
yeah, the hand holding in this game is in this whole series a little bit excessive. Sorry. Okay, so what's next? Next is the subject of the murder weapon. Wow, this is starting to sound like a real trial. It is a real trial. Okay, so kitchen knife set. By the way, you have to click to progress so with the bullet shows to kill her. There was some kind of sharp object thrust into her stomach. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt, that is the murder weapon. Well, yeah, so no doubt. So the killer used some random knife they had on him. No. No, that's wrong. We didn't come in, like, all our stuff was taken, so that would have been no. impossible anyway. I do think it was a knife, but not just any knife. I'm almost positive it was a kitchen knife. Huh? A kitchen knife? Mm -hmm. After the murder. We discovered that one of the knives from the kitchen was missing. Which means that knife must be the murder weapon. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. You could sort of see the weapon sticking out of her stomach. Right, which we said, Mon Mondo. And if you look real close, I could totally see that being a kitchen knife. Yeah. Okay, so the murder weapon was a kitchen knife, but where does that get us? I mean, we all know Makoto killed her, right? Okay, That's so... right. Makoto's room was the scene of the crime. What more proof do you need? Well, I have proof that oh, says I didn't second. do it. I'm... Let's draw our conclusions after we've presented our arguments. Otherwise, what's the point of the trial? Thank you, Kyoko. Well, we can talk all we want. It's not gonna change that conclusion. Hmm. I don't think that's true at all. I'm sure if we keep at it, something new will reveal itself. Leon sure seems confident. You really believe that? Yes. Yeah, there's gotta be a breakthrough somewhere waiting for us to find it, because I know that I'm not the killer. A bit more to learn about non-stop debates. You wanna hear? Yes. You can concentrate by holding down the space key. While you're concentrating, time will slow so you can pay closer attention to what everyone's saying. Oh yeah, that's right. Thank God, because the reticle is so twitchy. It's gonna be impossible. It'll steady your aim, making it easier to target potential weak spots. Concentrating like this consumes the focus gauge, and if it's empties, you can't concentrate. The focus gauge will recover over time, so let your brain take a rest. No need to rush. Well then, good luck and have fun. Here we go. Oh, that's right, Hina. Hina has the uh, clue that we need. So I guess there's no question that the kitchen knife was the murder weapon. Right. But where does that get us? Makoto must have taken it from the kitchen, right? He did it in secret. When nobody was in the. Nope. No, that's wrong. I'm sorry if it's annoying you that I'm skipping going through the whole dialogue, uh, but I am trying to move things along. Okay, wait. Hold on. I didn't take the knife from the kitchen. I guess for the first trial, I'll let the whole entire conversation play and then go back and choose. And if you guys would prefer, I just go ahead and shoot it when I see it. I Next, will. Next, you're gonna say you're not the killer, right? Go ahead and say it all you, you want. Well, what if I have a witness? What do you think, Hina? Huh? Remember what you were telling me earlier? Well, flashback. Right. Just to be perfectly clear, the knife disappeared while you were in the dining hall, correct? Yes. Yeah, that's right. And at any point while you were there, did you ever see me come into the dining hall? Um... No, I don't think so. You don't think so? You don't think so? Exactly, be confident no, in your assertion, please. No, he definitely wasn't please. there. The uh. knife disappeared while Hina was in the dining hall, but I wasn't there the entire time. So, am I- I in have an alibi words, now, There's right? no way I could have taken the knife. Okay, then what about this? What, what if the no. idiot swimmer girl and Makoto are in on it together, and lying to protect each other? Idiots. <laughs> idiot swimmer girl? Oh, and more importantly, why would I get involved in something like that? Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear, if there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? 
So you ask, and so I shall answer. Oh, I was actually expecting him not to. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. Okay, so there's no point so in being in an accomplice. So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. Well, unless they both kill someone, but since there's only one victim in this case, yeah. It then there's no sense. way anyone would work together, right? But what if they did work together, and they just didn't know about the rule? Ugh, good grief! Enough already! No, okay? There are no <laughs> accomplices <laughs> so in this sad. case! Uh -uh. Oops! Did I say that out loud? Yes, Anyway, I didn't go to the dining hall, and I didn't take the knife. So I'm not the killer! Okay, so then... Who did take the knife? Yeah, that's how Kina we have to seems the out. obvious candidate. After all, she just said she was in the dining hall. No, no way! I swear it wasn't me! Sure, but can you or anyone else prove that? Yeah, we had a witness with this. I can. Oh, hi, Sakura. That's right! Sakura was with me the entire time I was drinking my tea! Uh, I hate to have to ask, but just to be sure, Sakura's... Sakura's wearing a skirt, me. for the love of God. Oh, you were asking who she was. Wait, what? That makes even less sense than being... How, right. How do you not know? But then, Gosh. couldn't either one of them have grabbed the knife? I thought he was about to ask about if Sakura was a woman or or man. Actually, no. Because, um, well... Just spit it out already. I stayed in Hina's room last night. Oh. I got so scared thanks to those creepy videos. I wasn't really thinking, I just asked her to stay over. Which means, we have airtight alibis. Okay, so that's three people here who it couldn't have been. You stayed over? Doesn't that violate one of the school regulations? We're not allowed to sleep anywhere but the dorms. But it doesn't say we have to stay in our assigned room. Which is why Sayaka and Makoto switched, exactly. So I don't think that's a problem. It is a problem! A boy and a girl spending the night together? It's... it's... unwholesome! Taco. But... I'm a girl. Really? You are? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry! Wow. But if it wasn't either of you, then what other possibility is there? Actually, there is one other possibility. Right, Hina? Oh yeah, that's true! One other person did come to the dining hall while we were there. Uh, okay. Why didn't Why? you say so in the first place? That's exactly what I was about to ask. Well, because... They're not here anymore. Oh. Wait, what? Sayaka. She's the one who came to the dining hall. And then later, oh. she wound up dead. Wow. Oh, okay. What? Okay. So the person who took yeah, there occasionally they ask you questions like this just to make sure you're paying attention. I Sayaka was the one who took the knife. Then. then Sayaka is the one who took the knife. I mean, she was saying that she like you know felt uncertain about her safety. That's earlier. the only possibility. And hmm. thinking back on it, she was acting kind of unusual. Hmm. When she came into the dining hall, she didn't even look at us. She just went straight to the kitchen. Okay, that's weird. As she left, she said she just wanted a drink of water. But most likely... And the person who took the knife was the victim herself! Where did she store the knife, though, after she took it? I guess she just put it under her shirt and walked out? Because how did they not I'm see sure, her with it? I'm sure she just took it for self-defense. Oh. So you're saying the knife she took was then taken from her, and she was killed with it? In that case, you may not have taken the knife, but you still could have killed her. Makoto, why? We're so close to being free of being suspect. What? You had to go and say something. See? He did do it after all! Ah. No! You're wrong! Okay, we're back here so, again. that's how you would twist the argument and send us all off in the wrong direction? Oh, God. Hmm. You possess a most terrifying talent. The talent of deception? The ultimate con artist? 
Don't they understand? If they convict me, everyone's Hold gonna on. die. It's still too early to decide conclusively that Makoto is the killer. Thank you, you Kyoko, for being the voice of reason. Because you see, if the room did belong to the killer, then they did something most bewildering. Let me guess, she's talking about the and door? Until we unravel that little mystery, oh, wait, no. You That's simply not what can't declare about. that he's the killer. Though, it could be, but probably not. Bewildering? What the hell are you talking about? Something was missing from the scene of the crime that by all rights should have been there. You know, this is a piece of evidence that I actually don't understand. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Um, your first hangman's gamut is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? Yes. As things advance further in the class trial, the hangman's gambit will eventually take place. Well, once I do this little mini game here, I'll express my concern over this uh, uh, piece of evidence. The point of this is to reveal an important phrase related to the incident in question. You have to deduce the phrase from the letters flying around and the letters already known. Complete the phrase by shooting down the flying letters in the right order. It's a mouse to aim and then press the left mouse button to shoot the desired letters. Down wrong letters or suffer damage to your influence gauge. If this gauge reaches zero or you run out of time, you fail. Well then, good luck. By the way, the influence gauge is the uh, the hearts that were up in the uh, right hand corner when I was um, doing the trial thing before. I think that it should have been at the scene of the crime, but wasn't. That must be a crucial point. If we can figure out what that something is. Yeah, I, I realize what, what she's talking about now. A. R. There it is. What? Oh, I did it twice? What? Now I understand. Okay, then. Yeah, here. Remember, uh, Kyoko asked us if That's we were right. a clean freak there wasn't earlier? A single hair on the floor. Yeah, I don't understand this. Like, why would that be. So, the culprit removed some evidence? Like, I really don't understand that at all. Like, do people shed that much? Yes. And if I were the culprit, why would I need to get rid of all the hair in my own room? It wouldn't be unusual at all to find my hair at the crime scene if the crime scene is in my room. The okay. reason all Fine, the I'll hair was it. gone was to remove any trace that Sayaka had ever been there. Yeah. That makes sense, does it not? No. If that were the case, they would have had to do something about the body itself, right. not just her hair. Ha ha ha! Yes, very true, very true! Okay, then why wasn't there any hair on the ground? The killer got rid of it all, of course, to remove any trace that they had ever been there. Right. Wait, then that means... Precisely. It's simply beyond reason to believe that the room's owner and the killer Thank you, are one and the same. Then, Makoto isn't the culprit? Finally. Are you sure we can decide something so important based solely on the absence of some hair? Taka, please. No. There are other reasons that prove why Makoto couldn't have done it. I would like to hear these reasons. Okay, so some people still aren't convinced fully. Do you remember anything remarkable about the bathroom at the scene? Sayaka was attacked in the main room first, then fled into the bathroom, right? Yeah. Then they ran after her, got into the bathroom, and stabbed her. And how did the killer get into the bathroom? Did they have any trouble with it? They did. What do you mean? It's fairly certain that the killer had some trouble getting into the bathroom. There was clear evidence left behind. Do you remember, Makoto? Yeah, the broken doorknob. The killer struggled getting into the bathroom. The evidence that proves it is the object that the killer broke, which was the doorknob. Where is it? Uh... Right there. I got it! Evidence that the killer had trouble getting into the bathroom. You're talking about the doorknob, right? Huh? The doorknob? What doorknob? The doorknob for my bathroom. It was completely broken. Right. See how the top part was unscrewed? And the I doorknob guess we have a picture off? of it, I guess. I guess. I don't know how we're showing people oh, yeah, stuff true. right now. But what does it mean? Unless there are t TV screens or something in this room that we can't see. In trying to bypass see. the lock, they ended up nearly removing the entire doorknob. This is another most bewildering act for the room's owner. It proves Makoto is beyond suspicion. 
So what? You're saying he wouldn't break the door in his own room? But if the only choice you have is to break it, you break it. There's nothing bewildering about it. You still don't see? Okay then. Let's take another look at how the incident unfolded. Hopefully that will help you understand. Okay then. Sorry I'm not talking very much. I'm trying not to talk over their dialogue. I didn't notice it at first, but is that the key point here? There's a bit more to learn about non-stop debates. Okay, more tutorial. From here on out, the number of weak spots will start going up. And no matter how many weak spots there are, there's essentially only one lie or contradiction in that debate. Right, what I'm trying to say is not all weak spots you see are necessarily false. This is a truth bullet on the wrong one, and not only will you fail to refute what they said, but you'll also lower your trust with everyone, and your influence gauge will take damage. Now this is important because if your influence gauge reaches zero, you fail. You have to rely on your own logic to determine which weak spots are actually lies or contradictions. Well then, good luck and have fun. Yeah, so now now we're moving. They're very gradually moving up the difficulty of this instead of just throwing you in the deep end and watching you flail. The incident took place in Makoto's room. Right. Saika was first attacked in the main room. So back through she door frame was into the clue. back room. Mm-hmm. Then the killer right. ran after her, and they got into the bathroom. At that point, the killer had to try and bust down the door, because Sayaka had locked it. Hmm. I'm gonna let the whole conversation play. The culprit had Sayaka cornered. And to finish the job, they stabbed her with the kitchen knife. It was you, wasn't it, Makoto? Admit it! We already know the answer. It's not because the door was locked. No, there's a different reason entirely. Okay. The incident took place in Matsaika was first she then fled into the- Then the killer ran it and they got into the bath. At that point, the killer had to try and bust it because Sayaka had locked it. Nope. No, that's wrong. Oh wow, I used much of all of my uh, concentration during that. Whoops. The reason my bathroom didn't open wasn't because it was locked. After right. all- the girls' rooms are the only ones with walking bathrooms, exactly. right? Exactly. So ours couldn't lock at all. Yes. Now that you mention it, that is true. Mm -hmm. Then why didn't your bathroom door open? Because it was stuck. Huh? What are you talking about? My bathroom door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. Right. Monokuma over there can testify to that. Right. Yep. True as true. I like how the music be. changes when uh, Monokuma is speaking. But you know. You're supposed to be the uh, ultimate again. lucky student, right? But to have such a cruddy door... Yeah, haha, it's so funny. <laughs> That's not lucky at all! So the reason the door didn't <laughs> open was just because it was stuck. But the killer didn't know that, and I like how, it was like, nobody even responds to So they tore so apart the doorknob to get to in. Okay, but then why would the killer even think the door was locked in the first place? Everyone should have known you can't lock any of the boys' bathrooms. The killer could easily make that mistake, thanks to one important detail about the scene of the crime. Mm-hmm. Was locked, so they didn't know that the door actually couldn't be locked. In other words, the important detail about the scene that they didn't know was that it took place in our room. I got it! The killer must not have realized that it was my room. What? Are you saying the culprit didn't even know where he was? That's inconceivable! And yet, he's absolutely right. Yep. Say what? <laughs> well, to be more specific, what the killer didn't know was that Makoto and Sayaka had switched rooms. Which I'm still trying to figure out, because wouldn't you memorize where everybody's room, like, door is? Well, Which is what led to the misunderstanding about the bathroom. If Sayaka had been in her own room, then... Then there would have been a lock on the door, and they would have had to break through! Right. So they had no idea how unnecessary their actions were. Ultimately, okay. we can't know if it came open by force or simply by accident. The killer must have been considerably confused, with no idea how they actually got the door opened. Regardless, it was a pointless act. Wasting time trying to break down a door that wasn't locked is... Definitely something I wouldn't do, since I would have known exactly why it wasn't opening, right? Yeah, so can we move past this, that please? That is a definite possibility. 
<laughs> so the killer would have to be someone who didn't. I like how Byakuya doesn't want to straight up admit that we're right. Then Makoto couldn't have done it. So I've been trying to tell you. Okay, then who did do it? I'm sorry, but I give up. Quit without saving. <laughs> but what happens if we can't saving. decide on who we think did it? <laughs> well, why don't we just vote right now? Majority rules. What? No. Majority rules? Do you really think that's a good idea? No, it's not a good idea. Yeah, our necks are on the line here. Someone seriously needs to do something. For serious. I was... Okay. Does no one have any other thoughts or questions? It does not matter how trivial they may seem. Oh, as a matter of fact, I do have one question. Yeah. Oh, you. <laughs> what was you that reaction? So disappointing. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Just ask your question. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, um, well, I was just wondering... How did the culprit get into Makoto's room in the first place? Oh yeah, that hasn't been answered yet. Mm. Yes. How did the killer get inside? Maybe Sayaka just dropped the key somewhere and the culprit picked it up. That's possible, right? No, it's not possible. We found our room key in I our room. I don't think so. That seems way too convenient. Then... Maybe someone picked the lock? Oh, nope, Monokuma said that the rooms are lockproof. If you remember, Monokuma made it quite clear that the locks are all unpickable. Yep. Fine. How about this? The killer got in the easy way. They could have knocked and said they wanted to talk or something, and Miss Maizono just let him in. Good thought, but no. no. That can't be it either. Oh, ho! Trying to argue against me? Sounds like someone doesn't know his place. Or you don't. Hello? Why exactly can't that be it? Because she asked me to do something particular because of how frightened she was. The answer is right there. There's no way Saika let someone in because... Uh... The reason we switched rooms, right? I got it! Oh, that's because right. Sayaka was already scared, remember? That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. Right, yeah, we've seen this cutscene before. Knowing what she'd been through, I just can't believe she would have opened the door for anyone. What if her being scared was a lie? Ooh, what? Huh? Well, a what lie? What was that supposed to mean? Why would she lie about something like that? Uh, I know you don't reaction. want to consider it, but look at this and tell me. Can you still deny the possibility? I mean, she was acting weird. I won't deny that. Huh? There's something I want to talk to you about, just us two. Come in five minutes, come see me in my room. Check the name place to make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? Signed, Sayaka. I found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. And these are the words that appeared. So Sayaka wrote a note to someone. Oh man! I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. When mm -hmm. you write, it can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. Fascinating. When I saw that, I was like, holy crap! I better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. It's okay. a pretty old-fashioned technique. But even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. Yep. Oh, and I should also mention, I found the notepad on the desk in Makoto's room. Right, that's the notepad that um, Makoto decided wasn't important. Huh? Which means, only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. Then either it was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka who switched rooms for a single night. It's obviously Sayaka, it's signed so, by Makoto, her. So, Makoto, did you write this? No. No, I didn't. But... Of course you didn't, because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature, Sayaka's signature. To be fair, anybody could have written that signature, but then that note, Sayaka wrote it? But, but why? Why would she write that? The note was likely her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. Hmm. She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. 
If you got an invitation like that from the ultimate pop sensation, what young man could resist? I can't tell if he's trying to be dirty or not. Of course, I'm only into 2D, okay, he is so it wouldn't dirty. have okay, any okay, effect never mind. on me. But can we be sure anyone even got this note? And honestly, even if they did, I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Why? Huh? What makes you say that? <laughs> Would you like to hear what I have to say? That's why you were asked what, what you're talking Very about. Very well then. Pay attention. Okay, so we're in another non-stop debate then. The dorm nameplates. Okay. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? Yes, that's but true. But you know, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, my room. Mm hmm I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. Okay. The room that Makoto was staying in. So in other words, even if someone did okay, so that's the, note the clue that I need to use the bullet said, on. I just wanted to read. They would the not have any connection thing, to what happened. Hmm. It certainly would seem that way. Nope. Sorry, because the reason for that is it has to be because well, it got switched. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, but just in the fast note, look, it specifically said, "I see." So if then they would have gone to Sayaka. Exactly. The room that Mac. Nope. No, that's wrong. <laughs> I like how dramatic everything is too in these uh, the trials. The nameplates on Mai and Sayaka's rooms got switched. They got switched. How did no one notice? How did you not notice this? Didn't everybody that's else right. notice it? The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. Yep, making such a completely pointless. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. And the nameplate on Makoto's room had Sayaka's. So what you're saying is, the room Sayaka was staying in was actually marked as her room. Yes. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Mm -hmm. Plus, their rooms are right next to each other, so switching the nameplates would be no problem. Right. And the one who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? Nope. Right? It wasn't us. Okay, then who did it? Only one person who could have switched the nameplates. The only other person who knew that we had switched rooms. Sayaka. I got it! Looking more and more Me like, and Sayaka uh, were the only Sayaka ones who ever knew used about us, switching rooms. It? So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. You can also infer as much from her note. <laughs> yep, there's something I want to talk to you about. Come see me in my room. Check the nameplates to make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? If she specifically tells the reader to check the nameplate. She right. would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. Wow, and we thought that she was but our friend. Why would she switch them in the first place? She wanted someone to come to the room she was in, and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. What? Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switched rooms. Why would anyone it's do that? It's pretty obvious at this point why. To understand that, we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. Okay. That's where the answer lies. What happened then was probably whoever she invited over came in and attacked her. I mean, eventually, yes, but I think you're kind of missing the point, Taka. We figured it out! We know who did it! Whoever she invited over is the culprit! But we still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot! Yeah, I have to say thank you to Mondo on that one because he's Taka. Sayaka fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Yes. Perhaps the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Okay, let's talk about yes, the initial struggle then. You're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? Yes. That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? Um, oh, yeah. Seems like it. What's the deal with that sword? Sayaka suggested I should hold on to it. 
I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. Since there's a replica sword, would it actually do anything if you actually tried to use it on someone? It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. Well, other than that, but I mean the blade. How could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? Because of the way her wrist looked. Uh, where is it? I got it. There we go. All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist. And it should become pretty clear. Right there where her wrist is all swollen. There's something glittery there. Right, because the gold the golden stuff comes is, off of the sword. Is that comes gold? off of the sword, yeah. It sure <laughs> is. Specifically, the gold coating from the replica sword. You right. barely have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. And there's some on her wrist because I got it! Because she got hit with the sword right there on her wrist! You're a genius, Taka. I yes. See, I see. And so the truth draws ever closer. Yep. Like a snail and at a snail race. All right. Then it's about time to solve this mystery. Hopefully. We have him in my room and we'll let the Psycho's death. That's what we need to make clear. A bit more to learn. Another tutorial? What now? Are you getting used to these non stop debates? Yes. Starting with the next beat, I'll start loading multiple truth bullets into your truth cylinder. Okay, but just like with the weak spots, only one of those bullets can actually refute the proper statement. In other words, from here on out, you'll have to combine the right truth bullets with the right weak spots to refute each statement. If you come up with the wrong combination, you'll take damage to your influence gauge. Press the Q key to rotate the cylinder and choose which bullet to fire. Press and release the Q key to cycle through each bullet. Or you can use the mouse wheel. By the way, if the logic difficulty is set to kind, fewer bullets will be loaded into the cylinder. I'm not set to kind, I'm set to... gentle, I believe. For our purposes this time, the logic difficulty will be set to mean. What? Okay then, good luck. Wait, why are you setting it to mean just for the t tutorial? Okay then, whatever. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. Mm -hmm. A sword-based sneak attack. And that's what broke Miss Mizono's wrist. So I wasn't fully so listening. She tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away, but then the culprit took that from her too. And they killed her with it. And that's exactly what happened. I actually need to listen again. If the person with the sword really did attack first, there's no explanation for how a certain point of the sword got damaged. Yeah, the sheath. Okay, so the sword when sheath the is the right broke thing. broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack. Nope. No, that's wrong. Okay. Yeah, that's wrong. Actually, no. I don't think the fight started with the sword. Yep, it did not. Why not? Because the sword's sheath had been scratched. See? There's a gash in it. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Is that this picture of the short seat doesn't look like it's been damaged? It's something sharp? You mean, like the kitchen knife? That was the only sharp thing found at the scene. Stop jumping ahead! Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. Why are there so many slow people in this group? If the sword was used first, there wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. If you were going to attack with the sword, you'd take it out of the sheath first, right? That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Okay, so how did the sheath get damaged? If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, Maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife? Yeah. Which means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. Yes. I think I get it. So here's how it all played out. Please don't say something stupid again. The culprit came in found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere. 
Then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. Really, so Taka? she grabbed the sword to defend herself, but then the culprit took that from her too. Then, after they broke her wrist with a the sword, they took the knife and finished it. Yeah, you just realized that what you said kind of doesn't make any but sense. I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend herself. What? How the hell can you not think that? Because she never held the sword at all. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. The palms of her hands are clean. I got it! You're talking about her palms, right? Right, there was no gold dust on her palms, just on the her The palms wrist. of her hands were perfectly clean. So I don't think she ever picked up the sword. No. Nope. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. All you have to do is touch it. And I doubt the killer would have scrubbed her hands down. In fact, if you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. It's safe to assume that's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Exactly. Maybe she washed her hands after she escaped into the bathroom. Which is not possible. Sorry, but I don't think so. Why do you say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? No, Toko. No, that's not it at all. No way, because certain regulation. The water was off. The water turns off at night time, remember? According to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. In other words, at night time. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at night time, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I haven't taken a shower here yet. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> You're no different! You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey! Hmm? I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. It was an insult. An insult, obviously. Jesus, so so anyway, weird. if Sayaka never touched the sword, then that means the killer is the only one who used the sword. Yes. But hold on. If that's right, then the one who damaged the sheath with the kitchen knife was... The one who damaged the sheath would have been the one without the sword. Sayaka. I got it! Oh, we got so you. She had the kitchen knife? We got played, Makoto. But we already said that the anyway. attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first, and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. And the one who attacked first was... Sayaka? Yep. Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. No, far from it. It's almost as if... She'd been planning she to did say before that she's done awful things to keep her uh, dream alive. Things that she even regrets. So she probably would try and frame us for murder so that she could walk free. She took the knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation... Indeed. These are all the actions of an assailant. Which brings up another point. Makoto. Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Yeah. Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms was so that she could pin the crime on you. That is a possibility, is That's it not? That's probably the reason. Sayaka wanted to... on me? That would also explain why she would switch the nameplates. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room, where she was staying. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. But yeah. for that to work, the target had to be lured out, while still keeping the room swap a secret. If the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. Yeah, Byaki has a point. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Plus, she's our middle school friend, so... Plus, she was the ultimate pop sensation. 
Yeah, that too. A totally forgettable kid. Or Whoa. a national superstar. Totally or forgettable kid. Believe. Wow, Toko, really? Wait, then you're saying she had this all planned out? And then everything went wrong. Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. Yeah. She launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. That must be when her wrist got broken, and she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she'd planned to murder. Just hold on! That can't be true! It is true, Makoto. Because... Because... Because you don't want it to hey, be true. Hey! Hey! You guys have totally derailed the argument! You're being super boring right now. Come on, hurry up and decide who did it. Wouldn't it be awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time? Oh, that would be bad. yeah, we gotta decide who we think did it. Why do you say that like you forgot? Makoto, right now you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. Yeah, we gotta figure out who killed Sayaka. If we can't uncover who murdered Sayaka, it's over for all of us. Is it? Is it really all over? Obviously, I'm committed to finding out who killed her, but what can I do? I mean, as far as clues go, there's nothing left. Wait, ha have we exhausted all of our clues? Because it feels like we haven't. Dying message. Okay, yeah, I thought so. I thought we still had something left. It's easy just to say, hey, decide who did it. But there just aren't any more clues, right? I mean, there's one more. There's one Very well. Says. Then let's review all the clues we found up to this point one more time. Do we really have time for all that? D die! Die! If we don't do something, we're all gonna die! Okay. Yeah, there is. Okay, so the it's second easy thing just to say, that was hey, said. Decide who did it. But there just aren't any more clues, right? There are. No, that's wrong. One last one. There still might be one clue left. Sayaka's dying message. Right. Dining. Wait, wh what did you say? <laughs> the dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her. Remember? One, one, zero, three, seven. Written in her own blood. There must be a clue about the killer hidden in there. Well, before we get too far into that, huh? I need to ask, can we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? There's no question that Sayaka wrote that message. I can prove it because of her left index finger. I got it! Right. Her left index finger had blood on it. That could only be because she used that finger to write the message. Mm -hmm. I see. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Sure. Yep. I think we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But still, what the heck do those numbers mean? One, one, zero, three, seven? Hey, Chihiro. You're a computer nerd. You already whatever, asked right? Chihiro about you this. You should know all about numbers. Chihiro and shit. So it didn't no, mean anything. that's not. Yes, I'm a programmer, but I don't see any kind of meaning in these numbers. Of course, it's because they're not numbers. Oh, yeah, it looks like. Huh? What? What? No, it's just a look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Don't these first two one one look less like two numbers and more like one letter? Yeah, oh, you're right. The connecting line is barely there, so I assumed it was 1-1, one, one, but looking at it now, you could also read it as an N. Yes, Whoa. it is. You might have finally just said something <laughs> worth a shit. Wow, why is everybody so rude to each other? <laughs> Our little gray cells are really getting excited now. But even if that really is an N, N037, doesn't make any more sense Please than before. Please don't make me handhold through this section. I really don't want to. It's no use, I don't know. <sighs> really? Rotate the image 180 degrees. 
Thank you, Kyoko, for pointing it out, the obvious. Rotate, I think maybe I see something. Basically, she means to flip it upside down. You flip it upside down, you see what it says, L-E-O-N. Oh my god. Now I see. She wrote down the killer's name. Huh? You just shot past the clue part and right on to who did it. Because we've been here forever. So, whose name did she write? So that because Diamond Message reveals the killer's name. Turn the message 180 degrees, it should become crystal clear. Select someone. Where is he? There you are. Here's my answer! The key Leon. to solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing 180 degrees. Yes. If you turn the message around, it becomes the letters L-E-O-N. L-E-O-N. Or more accurately, Leon. What? what the hell that are was you clever on Sayaka's part. It's just a coincidence. She probably realized that the murder would be penned on us because it happened in her room and she didn't want us to get to get convicted. Which I guess is noble of her, but at the same time she did stab us in the back. Eh, I feel conflicted. It's just a bunch of random squiggles that happen to look like my name. Really? No. Random? It's not random at all. <laughs> she wrote that message on the wall behind her as she was leaning up against it. In that position, she couldn't move to write normally, and had to write upside down as it were. And as a result, when you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up getting flipped. Try it for yourself if you want. Write something sitting like her, and the letters will be inverted. I don't have to try it to believe you, but thanks for that. Th that sounds like one hell of a stretch to me. I don't think so. I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like and that. I just realized we have a whole lot of clues that we haven't used yet, so this trial's far from being over. If you're not did I mention the killer, that the class trials are long? Then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Huh? You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of? Yeah, you're talking about the shirt and crystal ball, right? Thing I found in front of the incinerator, right? Uh, I'm supposing you mean his the shirt, right? I got it. Yeah. You mean the burnt shirt piece I found laying on the ground by the incinerator, right? As the killer stabbed Sayaka, they must have gotten some of her blood on them. And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they threw it into the incinerator. But one piece burned off and got left behind. Mm -hmm. And the killer didn't notice. If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Yep. Isn't that right, Leon? But is one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty? I think so. Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button-up. But yeah, Hero's wearing a white button-up, too. That, that's right! There are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. Actually, now that I think about it, if he did throw his shirt into the incinerator, where'd he get a replacement? With just that one little charred piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. Because as far as I know, we don't have any extra clothes or anything with You're us right. right now. That alone other isn't than what's enough. Being provided by the but school. there are some other points that may reveal the truth. Or by Monokuma, I guess, more accurately. Are you finally starting to understand? The answers to all the riddles are right here. Yeah, I think so. Burnt pieces are mean, which the killer wasn't able to get rid of. There's something about we need to pay attention to in order to find, um, probably how it was disposed of, right? Because where and when doesn't really seem significant right now. I got it! If you look closely at how the shirt was disposed of, we should be able to figure out who the killer is. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're gonna say. What? You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? Okay. And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on, either. Right. You need the key to get in, and the one with the key was the person on cleaning duty. Which was Fumi. So the killer Fair had number. to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash, right? <laughs> Interesting. Fumi, you do realize he's implying you, right? <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> it's wrong, there's another way to use the incinerator without being the one on cleaning duty, and that's exactly what proves that Leon is the real killer. 
Okay, like I said, we still have clues left over, so... Trial's still going. The shattered crystal ball. The key to the trash room? Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash? And you'd have to get close to the incinerator in order to destroy the evidence. Which means the only possible suspect is whoever had the trash room key. Okay, so the person who would have had the trash room key was... Huh? You. Me? Really, Fumi? No! <laughs> the key to the trash room. Whoever was on cleaning duty. So the um, only one. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And is it? you'd have to get close there to the incinerator. No, that's wrong. Yeah, so far this one's pretty simple and straightforward, but probably just because it's the first Hold trial. On. I think I know because how someone I put this can dispose of the evidence earlier already. without using the trash room key. But if you can't get past the gate, you couldn't possibly turn on the incinerator, could you? Yes, you could. If you used this. What is it, some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but, uh... But how would you use it? I'm glad to use it. Throwing it. I got it! He is the ultimate the baseball star, after all. The killer simply took aim at the incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. All they had to do was hit that switch, and the incinerator would come to life. Kind of wondering how no one... Oh wait, it was during nighttime, so never mind. That's how no one heard it, because they were in their rooms, and the rooms are soundproofed. So never mind. Through that... Through a gap in the gate? Remember what you said before, Hifumi? Yeah, we have another flashback to him being surprised that the incinerator was on. Hifumi had the key, so the only way the incinerator could have been turned on without his knowledge was because the killer was able to hit the switch without opening the gate. Once they'd gotten the incinerator going, all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in. I'm kind of wondering how, though, because like if you've ever balled up a shirt and thrown it, it just comes right apart. So did they like tie the shirt together hey, or something? come on! What the hell is this? Um, the fact that you're guilty? All you have to do is look at the scene to know that the killer never actually went inside the trash room. The shards mm -hmm. of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire. If the killer had been on cleaning duty, the evidence would have been taken care of much more thoroughly. Exactly. Well, wait, no, just hold on. No, Leon, you hold on. But the distance from the gate to the incinerator <laughs> has to be at least 30 feet, right? The pinpoint accuracy you'd need to throw a glass ball that far and hit something that small. Could someone really do that? That That's right. There's no way. It'd be impossible. For a normal person. Difficult, absolutely. Impossible? I don't think so. Because the killer is... Too much challenge because it's the ultimate baseball star. I got it! Because the killer is the ultimate baseball star. Exactly. Isn't that right, Leon? <laughs> do, you, do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? Do you have any idea how stupid you sound? A target 30 feet away would surely be little challenge for the ultimate baseball star. Exactly. You, you, you can't be serious. Well, I, gave I, it away because you just had to go and use your ultimate skill to I'm get out of killer. it. Are you going to deny These it now? These goddamn shipper brains have got it all wrong, I'm telling you! You still nope. won't admit it? You're starting to get, okay, then. get irate now. Makoto, go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. What are we and doing now? That, we can end this. Listen to me! What the hell do you mean, end this? In this trial that has been going on for a stupidly long Say amount of time. Say what you want, Leon. But all the questions have been answered. And the truth has been revealed. Now here's what happened. Closing argument is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? Sure. In every case, at least one last element to bring to the trial to an end. This is the closing argument. In this phase, you'll, be, you'll give a complete summary of the case. You have to reproduce the flow of events for the case in the form of a comic book. However, you'll notice that in the comic, there are a number of pieces missing. 
for you to complete the comic using the truth panel. So basically, it's like a jigsaw puzzle type thing. You put the stuff in the sections where it goes, and, uh, yeah. I don't know if using hints detracts from your score, but anyway. Um, so, let's see. So it looks like this is all... Wait, hold on a second. I need to... Okay, moving the truth panels. Hold down the left mouse button to pick up a new turn. Okay. Navigate, okay. Use the mouse wheel. Okay, cool. I wasn't... If they said that, I wasn't paying attention. I believe I have everything correct. The Hopefully. killer is you. I think I'd better take one more look back at the case from the beginning. Nice. Last night, the killer went to the room Sayaka was in. In other words, my room. Mm -hmm. From what we can tell, Here's that epic Sayaka music again. invited that person there intending to kill them. Right. I like how the, the person who's the killer is just earlier. a gray blob in the uh, comic book. Because like, if we already don't know who it is. Nice, got it. Perfect. But the, then that was the only thing I was worried about being wrong. They grabbed the fake sword I put in my room and fought back. Wow, Saika looks crazy in this comic. During the struggle, a strike from the sword broke Sayaka's right wrist. And then she dropped the knife. What? Wait, what? I messed up. Oh. Okay, so... Okay. So then... So all this is right up until this point. Good God. So where does this go? So, is this just not used? Because I'm pretty sure I have everything sure filled out. You! During the struggle, a strike from the sword broke Sayaka's right wrist. Mm -hmm. And that's when she lost her grip on the kitchen knife. Right. Finding herself cornered, Sayaka panicked and ran into the bathroom. The killer went after her, but couldn't get the bathroom door open. What they okay. didn't know was that my bathroom door got stuck easily, and there was a trick to opening it. Sayaka knew about that because I told her, but of course the killer had no way of knowing. Can't believe I got that wrong. So instead, the killer forced also, the door pretty open, sure that... took the kitchen knife. I'm pretty sure that all of the pieces have to be used in some way. So, and stabbed Sayaka. Right. But with what strength she had remaining, Sayaka left a dying message. To keep the killer from noticing, she wrote it on the wall behind her. And with that, all her strength was gone. Mm -hmm. With Sayaka dead, the killer quickly began destroying the evidence. So really, there was an extra panel that just wasn't used? First, they took off their shirt, 
which was covered in their victim's blood. I'm really upset over that. I had a near perfect run with this trial. Then they took the lint roller until in my that room point. and cleaned up the entire area. They wanted to make sure they got rid of any trace they'd ever been there. I didn't realize that they put in tricks. Afterwards, the killer headed to the trash room to destroy their bloody shirt. They tried to burn the shirt using the incinerator there, but the trash room was blocked off by an especially sturdy gate, preventing access to the incinerator. So they came <laughs> up with a plan to use Hero's crystal ball, which he left in the laundry room. Should really be called a glass ball, but whatever. The killer managed to throw the ball through the gap in the gate and hit the incinerator switch. For any normal person, that'd be an impossible throw. But the killer had the confidence to take a shot. And that's because the killer was the ultimate baseball star. Mm -hmm. The crystal ball, thrown with absolute precision, hit the switch on the incinerator which then quickly roared to life. Okay, so he did tie it up, okay. Because I was wondering. Having destroyed the final piece of evidence, they left the area with, I imagine, a sigh of relief. But there was one thing they missed. Part of the shirt they'd thrown into the fire burnt away, and fell out of the incinerator. The killer didn't notice this, and so left behind a piece of indisputable evidence. Yep. Huh. <laughs> Isn't that right, Leon? Complete. Yes. It would appear that Hero simply forgot his crystal ball in the laundry room. You went there to try and wash the blood out of your shirt, and that's where you saw it, right? Wouldn't it just been simpler to just wash the shirt? Seeing the ball, you thought of a way to take care of everything. So, Leon, do you object to anything that's been said? I mean, we're right. Do I object? Hell yes, I object! Of course I do! I object, I object, I object! Really, dude? I mean, all of this is just a bunch of stupid theories! You need evidence! Where's the evidence?! What have I been doing for the last... however long it's been in this video? Giving you evidence. Without evidence, it's all bullshit! It's bullshit and I refuse to acknowledge it! Come on. Well then, I no. guess this is as good a time as any to present the evidence that proves you did it. Makoto, I believe you're in possession of that evidence? Am I? Your first bullet time battle is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? More tutorial stuff because <sighs> this isn't long at all. Sometimes during a class trial, your opponent simply won't hear what you have to say. When this happens, you will engage them in a head to head battle. Basically, like, um, basically a rhythm game. Let's refer to this as bullet time battle, aka BTB, BTW. <laughs> oh, you're funny. During the bullet time battle, you want to destroy your opponent's statements in time with the rhythm. Match your button presses with the each tempo marker as they move across the screen. Right. Press the right mouse button to lock on to an opponent's statement. destroy the statement you've locked on to with the left mouse button as the tempo marker reaches the center. Okay. I don't know why it keeps pausing. Use this method to deal damage to your opponent. If you can't pull it off, you'll be the one in pain. Do this consecutively and you'll start a combo. Keep this going until you initiate a tempo up. On the flip side, if you keep missing, you'll get a tempo down. And the tempo changes, so does the timing for hitting each button. So watch out for that. Deal enough damage to your opponent and their weak spot statement will appear. At that point you can press the left mouse button to shoot it with a truth bullet just like any other statement. You shoot their statement fast enough and you'll come out victorious. Just like before, if your influence gauge reaches zero or you run out of time, you fail. 
Well then, good luck and have fun. When the killer removed the screws from the doorknob, they didn't use anything from your room to do it. Instead, they must have used something that belonged to right, them. Right, the toolkit, the only piece of evidence we haven't used yet. Could have I been. refuse to acknowledge you! You're stupid! <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid! Leon, come on, don't be difficult about this. Stupid, 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 stupid! Good God. I mean, he is gonna die if he gets found guilty, so I guess I can kind of understand. Okay, I need to concentrate now. Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance. It wasn't me. Stupid. You lie. Stop talking. Shut up. Where's your proof? Just alternating between the right and left mouse button. You kidding me? Not a chance. You lie. Shut up. Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance. It wasn't me. Stupid. Final strike. Where's your proof? This should prove it. There we go. Nice. I actually got a pretty good combo going there. That was that was cool. The screws on the bathroom doorknob were removed. I wonder what kind of tool the killer used to remove them. Screwdriver, we already went over I that. I mean, it had to be a screwdriver, right? Oh, I guess that wasn't said. Oh, Whatever. yeah. I'm pretty sure the toolkits we got each had one inside. Mm -hmm. and that must be what he used. There aren't any other tools anywhere. But the right. toolkit in my room had clearly never been used. Yeah, it was still in his package. That's room. because the culprit didn't know it was your room. They thought they were in Sayaka's room. Only the boys got toolkits. So the killer naturally assumed there wouldn't be one in there. Right. Okay. Then whose toolkit did the killer use? Stupid, stupid, stupid! <laughs> oh, Leon. It had to be their very own toolkit. Stupid, 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 stupid! <laughs> Leon, would you mind showing us your toolkit? If I'm right about this, then the screwdriver will show some evidence of being used. Stupid, stupid, stupid! Huh? <laughs> oh, oh, now you're listening. And if you say you used it for something else, you'll have to explain exactly when, where, and why. And that excuse won't And fly. let me say this right now. I lost it isn't an excuse at this point. Stupid. Stupid. I think he's coming to terms <laughs> that, uh, he's lost. So, you have no rebuttal? Then it would seem we are finished here. Yep. <laughs> oh, wow. I actually like that animation a lot. So let's see. How did I do even though I botched up that one thing? Hey, nice! My score probably would have been more if I uh, hadn't messed it up. And I got 80 mono coins from that. Nice. It's also something else. You get mono coins. What's a mistrial? Yes, I got an achievement. <laughs> Looks like you've reached your verdict. Then are we ready to cast our votes? You all have a lever in front of you. Use it to make your selection. Oh, just to remind you all, make triple sure you vote for someone. You wouldn't want to be punished for something so minor, right? I don't know why we wouldn't vote. Okay, then let's get excited! <laughs> Who will be chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's let's it gonna go. be? What's it gonna be? Who is found guilty? Monokuma as the Napoli person. <laughs> it's so celebratory. <laughs> uh oh, looks like you got it right on the money. The blackened in this case, the one that killed Sayaka, was none other than Leon Kawada. Actually, I wonder, can I save my game? I can. Okay. 
So since I can save, I'm going to go on ahead and um, end this episode here, and um, I'll be back with the uh, final part of this next time. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Also be sure to like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter, as well as support my Patreon. All three links will be in the description below, and subscribe for more. And, um, oh yeah, if you are subscribed or a new subscriber, be sure to hit that bell icon so you get notified of when I upload videos. Viola Rules, signing off. Talk to you later.